In last recording, I introduced the concept of equipotential lines and the idea that the electric field and the electric potential are related to each other. Specifically, I said that the direction of the electric field vectors is always perpendicular to the lines of equal potential, the equipotential lines or equipotential surfaces. You can use that fact as a tool uh, in either direction of drawing either the family of equipotential lines for a given field, or if you happen to know the family of equipotentials, you can construct what the electric field of that collection must be from it. Okay? So I'm going to take the good old familiar example of a dipole next. And this field is um, not trivial, not simple, like the point charge of the two parallel plates. But, but this, we've seen this. So uh, I'm just going to show you real quick, it's not going to take long, uh, how you do this. Let's construct the family of equipotential lines um, of this field. And the rule is simple. Always draw your lines of equal potential so that they are everywhere perpendicular to the electric field lines. Now, there's a little bit more to it than that, and I will talk about that as we go, but that's the essential rule. Right? So, uh, as we go, I'm simply going to draw the, the field, the, uh, I'm sorry, the electric potential, the equipotential lines, as I say, so they're always perpendicular to the electric field vectors. So I'll start here, and I'm going to kind of do it in slow motion here a little bit, and then I'll go faster. But what I'll do first is simply draw a line that's perpendicular to the electric field right there. And then I'll try to stay this, well, anyway, I'll come over here, try to stay sort of the same distance from my positive charge, and draw a perpendicular line there. And then I'll draw a perpendicular line there, and then there, and there. And again, I'm endeavoring to stay more or less the same distance from the point charge. And everywhere, my little equipotential line segments are perpendicular to the field vectors at each point, best I can draw it. OK, and then I'll just sort of connect all of these into a smooth, more or less smooth, more or less continuous, well, completely continuous line. OK, and then I'll do it again. And I guess I'll just start here. This is going to be my second equipotential line. The, the potential at this line is going to be whatever it is that the sequence of lines I'm going to draw now. The, you will have a different number of volts. And again, I'm endeavoring to stay more or less the same distance from the source charge. And everywhere, I'm drawing my little line segments to be perpendicular to the field, okay? And so then I connect them into a smooth curve. And then I'll go here, I guess. And the trick is you've got to be careful to try to stay perpendicular to your field vectors. And it's tempting to start wandering off, especially when you get down here, but you can't. And, there, and the reason I'm erasing is because I find that I'm not being sufficiently perpendicular. I'm not being careful enough. Perpendicular everywhere. And there we are. And so again, I'll connect them. And that was terrible, but I'm bad at doing this by hand. And computers will do this a lot better than I will. Uh, and then you get to the, well, in fact, I'll just, I'll do one more and watch this. So I'm going to do one that's to the right of center here. And 
I'm just following the rule. I'm not thinking about it. I'm not. I'm just following my rule slavishly. Always draw your line of equal potential to be perpendicular to your electric field vector. Over here, you'll notice that the electric field is curved the other direction. So I'm going like that, and uh, I, I I can't go like, like this because I'm curving off to my right now and drawing perpendicular. Perpendicular, perpendicular. Yeah, it was a little off. Okay, and that's sort of okay. And you'll notice that now this particular equipotential line is enclosing the negative charge. Okay. And I can do that again. And this time I'm going to just start drawing smooth curves directly because I, I think you've got the idea now. Except it's really easy if you start going smooth curves to stop being perpendicular to the field line. So you have to kind of be careful in doing this. Okay. And I think I'll put one here in the middle. Perpendicular, perpendicular. Perpendicular, 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 all the way, everywhere, perpendicular to the field vectors until you reconnect. Okay, so you see what's happening. I'm constructing a family of equipotential lines, which are not simple circles, and here's a really important thing. You'll notice that the lines of equal potential are closer together to each other in some places than they are in other places. Okay. Out here, the field, I'm sorry, the potential lines are very far away from each other. In here, the lines of equal potential are very close to each other. That's not a coincidence, or I mean, that's not an accident. What happens is, the remember I said at the end of the previous recording that the, um, the electric field vectors point in the direction of, that is perpendicular to the equal potentials, and of course I've been using that rule right here. There's another relationship as well, and that is, the, the, and again, it's a two-way street, and that is this. The closer the lines of equal potential are to each other, the stronger the electric field is in that vicinity. And the reverse is also true. The stronger the electric field is somewhere, the clo more closely spaced the lines of equal potential are going to be. Okay. And so you'll notice that with the exception of very close to the charges themselves, these lines of equal potential are really densely packed here, which means that the electric field itself is uh, strongest in here. Okay. What's happening is that the, um, the electric field is directly related to how quickly the f potential is changing as you change position. What does that? What did they say? Well, look, the potential is some value here. Let's. I'm just going to make up numbers here. Let's say that it's uh, one volt here, and then this next poten potential is two volts, then three, then four, then five, then six, then seven. Okay. Now, the potential changes from one volt to two volt over this distance, which is about I don't know about two centimeters. Okay. Then the potential changes from uh, 2 volts to 3 volts, and this is not a completely accurate drawing here. And this is the problem with try my trying to do this by hand, is I'm not great at it, and I tend to draw inaccurate drawings. And so the electric field goes from 1 volt to 2 volt over a distance of about 2 centimeters. Here it goes from 2 volts to 3 volts, another change of 1 volt, but over a slightly smaller distance. It may not look like it to you, but it, it is. Um, then from here goes from 3 volts to 4 volts over about a half a centimeter. 
and then it goes from 4 volts to 5 volts over uh, about a quarter of a centimeter and so on. Okay, and so the more rapidly the potential changes as you change position, the stronger the electric field is. In short, and in mathematical form, it reads like this. All of these ideas enable us to uh, write an equation, and this equation encapsulates all, this all these ideas, and it is the following. The electric field, turns out, is actually equal to how rapidly the potential changes over a corresponding change of distance. Okay? That's the relationship. With one, there's one additional thing I have to throw in here, but it, with the exception of that one additional thing that I'll put in just a moment, this is the relationship between the electric potential and the electric field. I'll do some examples, but the, for a, a given change of potential, if that change of potential happens over a really long distance, then the electric field is small. If, however, that change of potential happens over a very tiny distance, then the electric field in that region is large. Okay? So, for example, Yeah, I, I was just debating with myself whether to tell you the one thing that I'm missing here before I do this example, and actually I just talked myself into it. Yeah, I'm going to put one other thing. Uh, I, there's a negative sign here. That negative sign has meaning, and I'll bring out the meaning of that in the course of this example, or these couple of examples. So suppose the electric field at position x1 is, let's say, uh, e1 is 2, uh, I'm sorry, not e1, b1. Suppose v1 is 3.5 volts at a position of uh, 2 centimeters from somewhere. Okay? And The potential at another position, call it 4 centimeters, is 6 volts. Okay. <clears throat> then the electric field that causes this change of potential can be calculated easily using this expression. Sorry, I'm fiddling with wires here. So the electric field is delta V over delta X, but delta V is V2 minus V1 over X2 minus X1. <coughs> I'm sorry, but there's a minus sign in here. And again, the minus sign will mean something here. And so I plug in the numbers. Negative. Okay, V2 is 6 volts. And V1 was 3.5 volts. The distance is, let's see, V2 is 4 centimeters, which is uh, uh, yeah, 0 0.04 meters. We have to be in SI units. Minus 0. 0, 0.02 meters. And so that's equal to negative. 6 minus 3.5 is 2.5, a change of 2.5 volts over 2 centimeters, 0 0.02 meters. And so we have negative... Um, 2.5 volts over uh, 2 times 10 to the minus 2 
which is 2 point, let's see, 25 over 2 is, sorry, you can't see that, uh, 25 over 2 is 12 and a half, well, I better just, just say 1.25, sorry, let me just do it like that, 2.5 over 2 is 1.25, and dividing by 10 to the negative 2 power is the same as multiplying by 10 to the positive 2 power times 10 to the second, and as far as my units are concerned, this is volts over meters. Okay, and so this works out to be 125 volts per meter, if I did my math right. Okay, and uh, yeah, of course, this is negative. Still haven't told you what the negative sign means, but I will. Okay, so this is how you calculate it, and so this is the electric field in this region. What region? The region between uh, four centimeters and two centimeters. So the potential changed by two and a half volts over just two centimeters. Two centimeters? Two centimeters, yeah. Okay. Which evidently indicates a large electric field, comparatively large, 125 volts per meter. And now we've got, now we've got two new problems. Okay. The first problem is these units are wrong. And the second problem is, what, the, what is that minus sign you still haven't told us? Okay. Well, as far as the units are concerned, well, we'll deal with both of these questions in the next lecture, but I will tell you in advance, these units aren't wrong. These units are not wrong. And the meaning of this minus sign, it's actually still the same problem that I mentioned at the, um, at the end of the previous recording we still have to figure out the direction of our electric field, and the minus sign, in fact, tells us that. So, all of that will be revealed in the next recording.